Ah, yes, the time waster game. Something that is primarily meant to be busted out on your mobile phone or tablet during boring travel time, or when you have some spare minutes in your cubicle and just really need that extra jolt of stimulation. Simple puzzle games, usually with a randomized element to them, are the best examples of this sort of genre. Games like Candy Crush Saga, Bejeweled, or really most of the games made by King Games and PopCap. Heck, even the seminal classic Tetris could be looked at as a time waster game, though it does require a bit more concentration than other examples. However, when you give the idea of a time waster game to, say, an independent developer, well, more often than not, you get Baby's first Bejeweled clone. But on occasion, you do get those games that are a little bit more interesting or a little bit more out there, such as today's subject, which is a solitaire roguelike game with RPG elements. And no, I didn't misspeak right there. Today, we're taking a look at Righteous Hammer Games' Solitarica. Yeah, I know it sounds like a weird way to describe a game, but believe me when I say it's the best way to describe it. Solitarica casts you as a brave warrior out to save the world from the evil armies of Stuck, led by Lord Stuck, using the most powerful tool available to you, a magically enhanced deck of cards. And that's pretty much as far as the story goes, and it's certainly not Shakespearean, but it at least gives you some agency and provides you a very nice and interesting backdrop to actually play the game against. When the game first starts up, you're given a tutorial to play through, which is helpful but is also unskippable if this is your first time you've played. Even if you're just reinstalling the game from an existing Steam account, you still have to watch and play through this tutorial every time. It is kind of annoying in that way. When you begin a journey towards Castle Stuck, you can choose what sort of deck you want to play with. Warrior, Wizard, Paladin, Thief, and the like. Well, you would be able to choose if all of them weren't locked. You're forced to start with the Warrior deck, and it's also pretty bare bones. After that, your objective is given to you. Defeat 18 monsters, and then Lord Stuck himself in order to win the game. Good luck in doing that, because this is a game that absolutely loves screwing you over. It is based on Solitaire, after all. There's really only two different screens in the entire game. You have the shop screen, which you visit after every battle, and we'll discuss that in a moment, and the battles themselves. Battles play out like turn-based RPG battles, where you make a move and then your opponent does. During your turn, you flip over a card from your deck and then have to eliminate cards that are either one higher or one lower than the card you're holding. That card becomes your top face card, so you want to chain together as many cards as possible in a single turn. You ultimately win the battle when you eliminate the last card on the board. However, when you get stuck and can no longer destroy cards with your current face card, you have to flip over a card from your deck, and when you do that, your opponent will draw a card from their own deck. Most often, it will be an attack card that will damage you, but there are also other effects a monster can have as well. You start out every journey with only 10 hit points, and while you can buy items to extend your life meter so long as you have them equipped, there's no way to permanently extend your life bar. If you fail to defeat your enemy before they drain all your life points, your heart is broken and you're forced to start over from the beginning. You lose all progress you've built up, hence the roguelike elements to the game. Any spells or items you've equipped or purchased, any money you've gained, it's all lost and you're back to square one. But every time you lose, you're granted a certain number of wildcard stones, these rainbow-looking things, depending on how far into your journey you got. These stones can then be used to upgrade your existing decks, or you can use them to unlock some of the other decks. Upgrading a deck can be as simple as gaining an extra item slot, up to a maximum of six, or giving the Queen, King, and Ace cards special properties when you draw them, such as healing yourself or gaining extra magical energy of a certain type. Unfortunately, every deck needs to be upgraded separately, so even after you've paid to unlock a deck, it's going to be completely bare bones. Now, what was that magical energy I mentioned? Well, in battle, every face card can have one of four different energies associated with it. Orange for attack, blue for defense, purple for will, and green for agility. When you draw a card from your deck or destroy a card on the field with that color, you gain one point of that energy, up to a maximum of ten. And when you have a certain amount, you can cast spells with those points. Every deck starts out with one basic spell in each energy type and their costs are usually fairly modest, usually 1 to 3. 
Attack spells are meant for destroying your enemy's cards as fast as possible and in a variety of patterns and forms. Defense spells are used for things like giving yourself armor so that your enemies can't attack your hit points directly, or stunning your enemies so that they can't attack at all for a couple of turns. Willpower is the healing element used to restore your own life, remove status effects from other cards, or prevent your opponent from using their techniques. Finally, agility gives you advantages by allowing you to see future cards in your deck or hidden cards in the enemy's column, allowing you to better determine which cards you should destroy first. But how do you get the more powerful spells? Well, you have to buy them, obviously. See, there's a fifth type of card, the coin card, scattered throughout the enemy's cards. Destroying these gets you one coin per card, and you're also awarded a set bounty amount by defeating the monster. You also earn more coins if you manage to get a streak of eight cards or greater in a single turn. Between every fight, you're taken to a shop where you can buy spells or items to equip on your character if you can afford them. Luckily, if you see something you like but can't afford it, you can pay to have it held until after the next battle, so it won't get rotated out. And yes, the store's stock changes after every fight, so you're not guaranteed to see the same assortment a second time. Unfortunately, you can only have a maximum of six spells and six items equipped to your character at a time, so you may have to be a bit picky about what you're equipping. Items can be used for a variety of helpful effects, such as stunning an enemy at the start of a battle, resisting stunning or status effects, raising your maximum health, or even starting the battle with armor already on. And of course, the closer you get to Castle Stuck, the more powerful and more expensive the items get. The game will also try to warn you away from trying to go out of the equip screen without having at least one spell of each type, but there's nothing from stopping you from not using any spells you don't want or don't find any use for. In battle, of course, your enemies will also grow stronger as you progress, but perhaps even worse is that they'll also gain the ability to inflict status ailments on your cards that have various effects on you. For example, if an enemy makes a card thorny, if you try to destroy it without using a spell on it, it causes a point of damage. Poisoned cards cause a point of damage per turn per card directly to your health and ignore your armor. Enraged cards will attack you whenever your enemy attacks as well. Bomb cards will count down and explode, causing heavy damage to you and your enemy. And perhaps most annoying are ice and armor cards, which can't be directly destroyed normally. Instead, you have to destroy the ice or armor over them first and then destroy the card. What's more, in addition to sometimes naturally having these abilities, monsters in later portions of the game will also have randomized attributes applied to them that give them abilities they wouldn't normally have. For example, a monster labeled as a priest will also be able to heal themselves by creating cards. An iron enemy will infuse cards with armor. Tiny enemies start out with less health and so forth. It's all completely random and you'll never know what you're fighting until you're face to face with it. And therein lies the game's greatest strength, but also its biggest weakness, the randomization factor. Now, I do know that most roguelikes have a very heavy element of randomness to them, and that's why a lot of people like them. But the best types of roguelikes are ones that are based around action RPGs, so they have a heaping helping of skill along with the luck. Or they're based around an idea where you can employ a whole lot of strategy to try and work around your own weaknesses or not getting the best loot drops in the game. In Solitarica, though, because of how random the game is, well, let's just say that it can be frustrating more often than not. That isn't to say that the game is totally devoid of any strategy. More often than not, you don't really have to time your spell usage, it's just always a good idea to heal yourself whenever you take even a bit of damage, or put on more armor when you have the points for it. But as you learn the monster's skills and behaviors, sometimes it can be helpful to bring along certain items or spells for specific enemies. For example, if you find yourself fighting a Zorpion, an enemy that fights almost exclusively by poisoning your cards and whittling you down by going around your armor, it's probably better to bring along a spell or item that would let you stun them or remove the poison effect. Of course, that's largely dependent on you being able to afford those spells in the first place, or even if they show up in the shop at all before you have a chance of encountering this monster. This is really why I classify it as a time waster game. When it's so easy to lose, even early on in the game, just because you had really bad luck with how the deck was stacked, and the lack of any real strategies to employ other than click on every card you can and make sure to keep yourself healed and armored well, 
it's tough to recommend it to anyone other than those who are just looking for something to distract them while they're working on something else. This isn't bad at all, but it does make this game more endlessly frustrating than something like Bejeweled, which, if I'm being honest, is much more mindless and you just keep going until you lose. With Solitarica, you can see well in advance that you're going to have problems, and yet more often than not, you're powerless to do anything about it. I can't count the number of times a decent streak of victories was stopped dead in its tracks by something like this. This situation happens all the time, from the start of the game to the very end. You've only got a few cards left, but the deck just won't give you what you need, and you can't build up magical energy enough to get a spell that would destroy them for you, all while the enemy is whittling you down to nothing. It's infuriating. Even when you don't have to give the game your full attention, when you're just sitting there watching your life drain away, it's, it's a bad feeling. Now even though you have to start from square one when you die, there is a way to save yourself that was implemented in one of the more recent updates, an hourglass item that can be purchased from the shop at any time for some wildstone cards or 150 coins. More often than not, I don't bother with it because the wild stones are more precious for upgrading and unlocking your decks, while the coins you get from fighting monsters is much better spent for the all-important items and spells that will help you live longer in battle. The game is fun, don't get me wrong, but with how easy it is to hit a brick wall, even early on, the frustration factors make it something that, even as a time waster, I can only really play once in a while. On a more positive note, the art style and sound direction is great. The art has some great designs for both the backgrounds and the monsters you fight, often taking on a humorous bent, and the quips that the monsters throw at you before and after battle are very enjoyable to see. There isn't a lot of music in the game, with most battles playing out in complete silence, but the main theme that plays between battles suits the tone of the game perfectly, being a bizarre, airy sort of tune that really makes you feel like you're wandering through a fantasy land where cards have magic powers. Then again, given the generation I'm from, maybe it should sound a little more like this. It's time to do 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 of course, with a lack of music during the bulk of the game, a lot more emphasis is put on the sound effects, and they all feel silly, poppy, and fun. I'm a particular fan of what you get when you complete a long streak of cards, it just feels really good to hear. At the time of this recording, the game is available on Steam for the princely sum of $12. And at that price, I don't feel comfortable giving it a full recommendation. If it were cheaper, or free, I'd say snatch it up in a heartbeat, and this isn't a case of me bitching just because it costs money in the first place. I'd gladly pay for a game I thought was worth that price, but therein lies the problem here. I'm just not sure that Solitarica is worth that asking price. I will admit it's a cut above most games of its ilk. A lot of work clearly went into its presentation, its look, and its gameplay, but for $12? For how frustrating and annoyingly random as the game can be, I really do feel that I overpaid for it. And I really don't know if anyone would feel the need to keep playing it long enough to unlock and fully upgrade all of the decks, especially since each deck unlock makes an already difficult and frustrating game even more difficult, with less helpful combinations of energy and starting spells. Heck, I really don't want to know who has the time to try and get all of the game's 27 different achievements on Steam. Solitarica is a game of interesting ideas and high extremes. It's a game that tries something new, and it does succeed somewhat at it, but it's hampered by the inherent lack of strategy and skill necessary for its baseline game, that being traditional Solitaire. I can't really recommend it for that reason, even if it is fun in short bursts for the price that they're asking it for. However, if you do happen to spot it on sale or for a lowered price in the future, I definitely recommend picking it up as something to play when you're supposed to be doing work in your little cubicle now and then. Or uh, if you really just like picking on dirt guppies that much. <laughs> It is admittedly a whole lot more fun than it should be. I'll see you all next time, everybody.